Hello, my name is Tess Granock, and I am a research data and scholarly communications librarian at the University of Massachusetts Chan Medical School, which is located on the traditional land of the Nipmuc, both past and present. While a land acknowledgement statement is an important initial step, it is not enough. It is a necessary decolonial practice that promotes Indigenous visibility and social justice, reminding us that we are on settled Indigenous land. With that in mind, I'd like to bring attention to the Nipmuc Indian Development Corporation, who are assisting in the revitalization of the Nipmuc Indian community through the promotion and provision of culturally appropriate community and economic development programs. For more information, please visit nippi.org. And to find out more about the Indigenous people where you are, I recommend searching your location on Native Land Digital at native-land.ca. What are the key parts of a data visualization? In this module, we'll provide an overview of the key components that make up a data visualization, the content, title, axes, and the source of the data, and some tips and best practices for each component. The main part of the visualization is the chart content, which includes the visual representation of the data and any associated labels, legends, and notes to help understand and provide context for the representation. There are many options to choose from for representing the attributes of data, such as lines, shapes, colors, size, etc. This table ranks the effectiveness of ordered and categorical attributes. For ordered attributes, such as size, temperature, and time, position on a common scale is the most effective, such as the height of bars on a bar graph or location of a point in a scatter plot in relation to the axes. For categorical attributes, such as country, species, and blood type, Spatial at region or the location on the chart is the most effective form of expression. If you choose to use different size shapes as your visual channel, do so with caution, as when shapes change, we compare areas, so the data point should map to the area and not just the length of one side or the diameter. One of the commonly used forms of expression for data is color, and color also plays a large part in the aesthetics of the visualization and how the visualization is perceived, because colors have different meanings and they can change across cultures. One can often see this in company logos, such as the color red, often associated with passion, love, blood, and excitement, uh, is seen a lot in uh, logos for food and entertainment, such as Coca-Cola, Dairy Queen, Netflix, and CNN. The color blue is associated with trust and calm, and is often seen in communication and healthcare and bank logos, such as Visa, IBM, and Bell. And green is associated with growth and the outdoors and is even in nature related and bank logos such as TD Bank, John Deere and Land Rover. So keeping the meanings in mind, how do you decide which colors to use for your visualization? There are many places to find color inspiration. You could choose a color from an image. To find the exact shade and hue, I recommend using an image color picker to get the color hex code or RGB code. You can also use copy pre-tested color gradients from sites such as Color Brewer and Cartocolor. A pre-tested color gradient will indicate if it is compatible with all forms of color blindness and if there is enough contrast between colors to be distinguishable when printed in grayscale. You can also use a single color or a group of colors as inspiration to create your palette using tools such as Chroma.js, uh, Color Palette Helper, or Color Picker for data, among many others. The color or colors you choose can be used to highlight a particular data point or group of data points. But it is important when doing this to work uh, with predefined color meanings instead of against them, such as using blue for water bodies instead of purple. And when using a color scale, make sure that you choose the correct one for the type of data that you're displaying and the message you want to get across. This map shows the percentage of the population under the poverty line in St. Joseph County, Indiana. Do the colors make immediate sense to the viewer? Is it easy to see what areas are higher or lower than others? In the second map, we've switched from the categorical color scale, which uses different color hues for each percentage group, to a sequential color scale using a single color hue, which gradually darkens as the percentage increases, so the viewer can easily see the patterns in the data. A great example of the importance of color choice was demonstrated in Bork and Gavos Peters at AL's 2011 study on artery visualizations for heart disease diagnosis, of which low endothelial shear stress is an indicator. 
Medical students who were shown these two visualizations of arteries had an easier time finding the areas of low endothelial shear stress in the visualization on the right, where it is indicated in red, especially in the two-dimensional representation, as opposed to the three-dimensional visualization with the rainbow scale on the left. This study further emphasized that rainbow color scales should never be used for ordered attributes. Visualization B uses red as a highlight color and leaves the rest of the scale in grayscale. This is an example of a divergent color scale, which is one of the three types of color scales. We've seen examples of each, but there are a few more tips when it comes to using each type. Sequential color scales or um, color scales that go from dark to light or light to dark should only be used with quantitative data or ordered qualitative data. And the color scale can be continuous or binned, or in other words, split into brackets as seen in the example on the right. Ordered qualitative data should only be used uh, with bin scales since they are not truly continuous data. While sequential color scales traditionally use a single hue, they can also use multiple hues, which increases color contrast, making differences easier to distinguish. Divergent color scales are color scales that start off dark in one hue, then lighten to white, then darken to a different hue, follow the same best practices as sequential color scales in terms of the type of data that sh they should portray and when to use a binned scale. Divergent color scales are less intuitive than sequential color scales, so when should you use one? Well, if you have a meaningful middle point and want to highlight it, a divergent color scale will help convey your message. A meaningful middle point could be zero for temperature above and below freezing in Celsius or an average or median or an agreed threshold or target. The last of the color scales is the categorical color scale, which should be used for qualitative data. And giving each hue a different lightness will also ensure that they can work in grayscale as well. Less is more when it comes to color and data visualization, and you always want to ensure there's enough contrast between the colors and between the visualization and its background. Color contrast is especially important to keep in mind if a chart will be printed in grayscale. Putting chart content in order, whether it's highest to lowest or lowest to highest or alphabetical, will aid your viewer's interpretation of the chart. And when it comes to three-dimensional charts, they should only be used for three-dimensional data because they have a tendency to distort two-dimensional charts, such as the pie chart shown here, where the gray slice of the pie looks larger because of the three-dimensional edge given to it so it takes up more area than it would displayed in two dimensions. Sometimes we require text to help understand and provide context for the content of our visualizations, such as legends, notes, and labels. Labeling data directly can eliminate the need for a legend and reduce the number of colors needed in a chart, such as the example on this slide. Data labels can also be used for annotation to highlight key points in the chart. When using labels, it's important to keep the text horizontal so it's easier to read. The title of the chart should summarize the message being displayed in the content, which sometimes requires a subtitle. Titles like access labels, captions, the data source, and other annotations provide context and improve readability and therefore should always be included in a chart. They should be descriptive and convey the main message of the chart. One way to link the chart content and the title is to use the same color for a variable in the title and the chart content. Axes provide the bounds and context for the chart. They also provide scale, so always start at zero to avoid distortion, with some exceptions. Axes highlight the main variables and units of measure. So to help the viewer determine a specific data point, consider adding grid lines as they can be useful reference guides. Just be careful that they don't add extra clutter to the chart. Also be cautious when using dual y-axes because the magnitude can change for each metric and imply correlation and causation when there is none. Examples of this can be seen on the spurious correlation site linked on this slide. When using multiple charts for comparison, it is important that adjacent axes use the same range and distribution of tick marks. It's also important to keep formatting and other chart elements consistent, such as color. So if the same groups are being shown in multiple charts, 
use the respective color for each group across all the charts. The final data visualization component is the source or data citation, which helps viewers find the data used in the visualization. So they may delve deeper into the data if they wish, and it also adds credibility to the visualization itself. So if you're using someone else's data, cite it. And if you publish the full data set, cite it. You can also uh, either copy the, the citation suggested where you got the data or use your preferred citation style. If there is no suggested citation and you don't have a preferred citation style, you can use the general format on the right of author, year, title with version, publisher, and access information, which are the primary components of a data citation. This video is part of a series of lectures recorded to teach about basic data visualization concepts. It was designed by members of the Visualizing the Future Symposia project and was made possible in part by a national forum grant from the Institute of Museum and Library Services. This content is designed to be used freely. See the video description for more information about this lecture series and the Visualizing the Future Symposia project.